John Humphrey Noyes was born in Brattleboro, Vermont in 1811. As a youngster, John was a rebel who had very little interest in theology. This may be because his mother was very religious. In 1826, John entered Dartmouth College, and while there, he attended a four-day revival meeting in Putney, Vermont, held by Charles Finney, but only because his mother insisted. This meeting had no effect on him until shortly after he got a cold which led him to think of death, and then he felt a belief in God. Leaving his disinterest in theology rebel self in the past, he embraced religion and went to Andover and Yale Divinity School to become a minister. In 1833, he obtained his license to preach. In 1834, during the Second Great Awakening, he declared himself free of sin and therefore bound only by man-made laws. He called this perfectionism. This way of thinking got his preaching license revoked. In 1837, he started writing in a periodical called Battle Axe about his opinions on marriage. A woman called Harriet Holton read these articles and became very interested in him, so much so that she supported him financially. John proposed to Harriet via a letter. In this letter, he listed out the conveniences on why they should wed. He also said that in this marriage, they would not selfishly possess one another. Between 1840 and 1844, John gathered 37 people to follow his way of life and perfectionism. It was a small communist society called the Putney Association. They lived very closely together. In 1846, John instilled the teachings of mutual criticism, complex marriage, and male continence into his community. Mutual criticism was a practice of critiquing one another for the bettering of the Putney Association. This could be done in a loving way without offending individuals. This was also done, usually, in a group setting. Complex marriage was a practice of every man being married to every woman within the community. Before sexual intercourse occurred, mutual consent had to be given. A person could not get too attached to another because this would be considered selfish. Noyes believed that a heart is capable of loving more than one person at a time. Male continence is a form of birth control in which the male does not ejaculate. Because of this, from the year 1848 to 1868, 40 children were born in the community of 250. Birth was a decision made by the whole entire community based upon health, appearances, intelligence, and good values. In 1848, John Humphrey Noyes was going to be charged with adultery, so he fled to Oneida, and 45 members of the community followed. Within the year, that number grew to 87. Their new location was close to the Canadian border, so if they were persecuted again, it would be much easier to escape. In this Oneida community, mutual criticism, complex marriage, and male continence were still practiced, but now ascending fellowship was added to the mix. This practice was to introduce young members into the society. An elder would choose a young person to become his or her sexual partner. This was especially important in young males learning male continence as it prevented against unwanted pregnancies in the older women. The Oneida community never became too large. The most members it ever had was 306. The Oneida community continued to be communistic and self-sufficient, making steel beaver traps for the beaver trade until the trade ended and they began making silverware. During the early 1870s, Noyes wrote many books regarding his religious and social beliefs. He wrote books including History of American Socialism and Male Continence. In 1876, problems arose when Noyes transferred his power to his son, Theodore Noyes. He was agnostic and ran the community with strict rules, which the people did not like. Some new rules he instilled also angered the surrounding communities. John then came back from Wallingford, where he had been living, to restore order, but it was too late. There was too much aggression and conflict. John abandoned the system of complex marriage and many of his followers tried to settle down as well, but complex marriage was such a prominent part of their lives that it was a challenge. In 1879, Noyes ran away to Niagara Falls to avoid persecution for adultery and statutory rape. He maintained contact with the United Community and his son via letters. In 1881, Noyes and his son both agreed that it was time to end the United Community and made it into a joint stock company valued at $600,000. In 1886, Noyes died in Niagara Falls from illness. The Oneida community was one of the most successful utopian experiments in the 19th century, second only to the Shakers, who had more members and lasted for a longer duration. Members were also generally very happy with their beliefs and the community was always peaceful. Thusly, although the Oneida community lasted for only 30 years, it was a big success for its time. 